Hello everyone, so in this particular video we will be looking at activation functions in PyTorch. So these are pretty common functions, sigmoid relu, leaky relu, tanh and softmax. You might have come across these in the, in the machine learning tutorials or uh, if you have done some deep learning before, you would have known. The idea for having this uh, particular uh, video over here is basically to cater to those who are not very familiar with these activation functions because we will be using them. we have used some of them we have used sigmoid we have used relu so in the past but however i need to initiate those who haven't started at least implementing these in the pytorch however in this particular video we will be only looking at the overall implement uh, overall uh, logic of these activation functions we won't be coding them because they are not generally coded independently they are used in the model so without any further ado let's get started so the first one is sigmoid this is i think the most famous and it is used for binary classification as you can see in the uh, in the bottom i've written here so this particular equation is the equation for sigmoid so one by one plus exponent of minus x simple as that the beautiful thing about this is its value always ranges from zero to one so you can see the graph over here it is close to zero it's not zero okay it never becomes zero so you can see this red line is the graph okay or uh, brown line so you see it's almost zero but never equal to zero and then when it uh, when the function comes near zero it takes a steep increase or uh, just an inc increment in its y value you can see the maximum value is always one okay it never reaches one but it tries to it tends to one okay and in this particular area as you can see there is an uh, up uplift and then again it saturates and tries to close uh, close its gap with the one line but again it never becomes one so uh, it is mostly used when you need to normalize the value apart from like uh, uh, at the end of the neural network in uh, so let's say logistic regression or in any uh, any neural network uh, for a binary classification you also use it sometimes in uh, let's say in lstms where you want to use uh, where you want to forget a certain section of uh, okay we'll be doing that in the next uh, in the upcoming videos however the logic is if you want to uh, if you want the network to forget some amount of information that time you use it right now it is used for binary classification and its range is 0 to 1 if you remember these two things it's enough second one is relu ReLU is a special function and you can easily see the graph over here and understand for any value that is less than 0 it is 0 so as you can see 0 for anything that is less than equal to 0 and x for any other value so if you see here the equation is y equal to x and this is 0 there should have been a line over here denoting the y axis here it is however and any negative value it is 0 0 or negative value 0 and for any positive value it is the positive value itself where it is used mostly used in the intermediate layers okay uh, the importance of using this is when you differentiate for example if you differentiate uh, sig uh, sigmoid of x you will also get some value that is between 0 and 1 so if you are uh, so if you are having um, activation layer you already know that in a deep neural network uh, the gradients basically vanish there is a problem called vanishing gradient problem so what happens in the starting layers if the uh, deep learning if the neural network is really really uh, deep then what happens is the starting layers they do not learn properly because the gradients have already uh, diminished so much that a lot of significant update doesn't happen in the initial layers so to alleviate the problem what they did was to bring relu now the, uh, if you see the differentiation so if you find the derivative of y equal to x you'll get one Okay, because you will have dx by dx which is equal to 1 and for these areas you will have 0. So what happens is that there will not be any diminishing gradient in the activation function. So that was the reason for using ReLU and it's mostly used when you are not very sure about uh, the activation function. Okay, So if I am not sure if I am implementing a neural network and I don't know which activation should I use then I mostly go for ReLU because it's a safe one Okay, and mostly I use it in the intermediate layers. The third one is leaky relu it's similar to relu except the fact that when there is negative value instead of being directly zero uh, it takes a very uh, it takes alpha comma alpha alpha into x where alpha is a very small value close to zero okay so the idea is to preserve the beauty of relu but at the same time not have zero as the gradient here okay 
so that was the idea it is also used in the intermediate layers uh, the the logic is almost the same as relu but is just a bit better okay then we have tanh tanh is also some function that we use sometimes um, if you look at the graph you can see the value ranges from minus 1 to plus 1 which means that the value is normalized so you have values that are very close to zero like one to zero very small range but the beauty of this is that you can also get negative values which was not given in uh, your uh, in sigmoid okay so this is one thing that you are getting over here okay so it gives so you you can use it in places where you want both negative and positive values but within a range of minus one to one okay so it normalizes as well as give it gives you both positive and negative values again mostly i have used it in the intermediate layers so let's say for example you are training a gan or something so in the um, bottleneck layer i use tanh most of the time okay last one is the most important one which is a softmax one if you want to understand it there is already a video on my channel dedicated video i'll give you the link in the description please go and watch however the idea is let's say you are having uh, it's used for multi class classification so let's say you are having um, the iris data set you have three different types of uh, flowers so um, it's a famous data set right so there will be three neurons at the end so what will happen is if you are given a particular sample if you are given a particular data point you are asked to predict to which class the flower belongs then obviously you'll get three probabilities to deal with such situations you use um, softmax now again i'm not getting deep into it um, you have to watch the video that i will be linking in the uh, that I, the link that will be available in the description so thank you very much and bye